12 to 9, yeah. <laughs>
praise God. Amen. Amen. We want to say, first of all, we want to give honor to our Archbishop. Amen. John Bain, do you give him a hand? All the bishops, Bishop George Sanders, Bishop Amos Carter, Bishop John B. West, Bishop James, Andrew James, and uh, Pastor Melvin Fisher, Elder. Sunday morning and to Elder, uh, Elder Butler, to all the ministers of God, all the saints of God, to uh, Bishop Witherspoon and to Bishop Powell, Patrick Powell back here that's so gracefully playing for us. We thank God today for just his goodness and his grace. Amen. Amen. We're so excited about our fourth year of our holy convocation, Faith Fellowship. Holy Convocation. Have you all been having a good time in the world? And you know in the world we used to sing that it's all right to have a good time. And I believe that if you're having it in the Lord, if it's all right to have a good time when you're having it for the Lord. And I tell you, we heard this powerful message last night.
Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty blade storm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then, more, then what looked like a flame of tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages. As the Holy Spirit gave them disability. Thank <laughs> you. 
I thought after Wednesday night it couldn't get any higher. And then when Bishop Powell came for Thursday, it was like, God, I didn't know it could get even this high. And then last night, oh my God, so tonight, tonight, I thank God for this holy convocation. Oh, it gives the opportunity for saints to just come.
said, we already started. I said, it's my way on the way. My realtor called. And he texted this morning at 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock, I was going to tell y'all I was up. Because I was. I woke up a little after 12. And I said, I got to get myself together. And I looked at the phone, and the phone said, he got the keys, but um, he going to let me know. change. 
up and speak Saturday. I was like, uh, let me think about it. You know, just for a moment, let me think about it. But I, I thought about it all that day, and it was all my heart, I was at work. Thought about it all that day. Thought about it all that night. <laughs> then I, I told my husband the next day, I said, you know what, tell him yes. And the reason why I said yes, I said, you know what, it's not lady calling me. I quickly realized it was God saying for me to come and speak here on today. So here I am standing boldly before you, getting ready to speak about the God that I serve. You know what, I could have been anywhere else today. And if y'all know today is tax free weekend, I could have been out shopping. I could have been dead sleeping in my grave. <laughs> in your alabaster box. <laughs> For many of you Bible scholars know that the Matthew was the book of revelations that Jesus is, not was, but is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. So if you will stand with me as we read Matthew 26 verses 6 through 13. And if you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, say hold up. Oh. Amen. Amen. Uh, Matthew 26, verses 6 through 13, and I'm reading from the NIV version. But while Jesus was in Bethany, in the home of a man known as Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste, they asked. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Amen. You may be seated. Now, setting the tone for Matthew 26, verses 1 through 5, it was two days before Passover, and the high priest and the makers and teachers of the law were plotting against Jesus. They were scheming to capture and kill him, and Jesus knew this, so he was preparing his disciples. Now, by this time, Jesus had performed several miracles. Jesus had given sight to the blind. Jesus had fed thousands with two fish and five loaves of bread. He gave lame men legs to walk. He healed the woman with the issue of blood. And he raised Lazarus from the dead and healed Simon from leprosy. But now here in verse 6, Jesus was invited to a dinner at Simon the leper's house. And I believe it was a sign of gratitude for healing him from leprosy. And when this woman, although not named here, was later named as Mary of Bethany, the sister of Martha and Lazarus, heard that Jesus was sitting at Simon's house relaxing and visiting. So in verse 7 it says, Mary of Bethany went to Simon's house with an jar of very expensive perfume and poured it on Jesus while he was at the table. But not only did she do that, because in Luke 7 and 38, Mary also wept at Jesus' feet and she wiped her tears with her hair. And Mary even kissed Jesus' feet. Now, I don't know about you, but I love to watch television. That's 
that's my favorite pastime. And I love to watch a show called Maury. Now, uh, even though I'm a little, you know, you know Maury, you play for that. Mary's back. 
Because Jesus put Simon and disciples back in place in verses 10 and 12. He said, when you say that this is a beautiful thing that she has done to me, you will have the Paul always, but you will not always have me. Remember, he was trying to prepare them for his death. So Mary was preparing him for his burial. I don't think that they thought that fat meat was greasy. I don't think that they thought he was born that way. But he was trying to prepare them. <laughs> he was forewarning them. So when she, thought, when she said, she said, I, 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 I was preparing him for his burial. So remember, when she was doing that, Simon was talking about her. So if you turn to Luke 7, 44 and 77, and you may not get there, I just call and say for you. But Luke 7, 44 through 47 says, Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, for many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has been forgiven little, loves little. So I pose that same question to you. What's in your alabaster box? Is your alabaster box your time? Because it doesn't cost you a dime to come and worship in the house of the Lord. Is your alabaster box your talent? Because it doesn't cost you a dime to come and sing in the house of the Lord. Be a usher on the usher board. Be a deacon sitting on the front row. Be a preacher speaking in a pulpit. It doesn't cost you a dime to do that. Is your alabaster time with treasure? Because yes, it does take money to keep the church going, to keep the lights on, to keep up on giving to the people in your community and into your church for the sole purpose of praising and edifying God's name. What's in your alabaster box? Because in Matthew 26, verse 13, Jesus says, truly I tell you, whatever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. When you pass, will you know what was in your house? Because in Luke 6, Jesus told
Amen. 
up. Then I thought, okay, well, I got I called my brother, got it going again and all. All I can I'm gonna tell you this, my notes <laughs> that I had been taking along as I studied or as I, something dropped in the spirit and I would go to the computer and type it in. I lost all of it, okay? And I said, okay, okay, right. Don't have money to go really do this uh, uh, computer, Greek geek or whatever they're called. So Bishop had bought me a laptop a long time ago and I didn't want to use it, but I finally pulled it out. Amen. And still had to call the computer people in order to get things going. But I want to tell you that our God is faithful. Amen. 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 Whatever you trust him for, he's going to give it. I thank God for sister, uh, that baby, Sister Powell. She said, what, what can I say? What am I going to say? Whatever God gives you. And she sung faith. Amen. And that's what God is looking for. Amen. Because the Bible says, amen, that without faith it is impossible to please you. You can look the poor, you can walk the sound real good, amen. But if you don't have faith, my brother, we and my sisters, we are not pleasing God, amen. We gotta take a look at ourselves and say, what is in your power, Pastor?
then I'm looking at it. Mmm. 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 God, I thank you for the journey. Amen. Through the book with my husband. Straightway Church. I was one of those pastor, bishop that was hung up on tradition. And because they didn't look a certain way, I was judging just like what Lady Phipps just read. Amen. Like those Pharisees. Amen. No, she didn't come in here dressed like that. Girl, y'all go take that girl naked to Go put something. Come on, y'all. They don't look the way we want them to look. Did they not say? Those young men, I was so blessed when we drove up. And Brother Kevin pulled up under the, under the whatever that is out there, we call it the pavilion. And we call it a porch. It was a hatch.
Oh, 
of which 18 are recorded only in Luke. So he really wants us to get the message, amen? Right. Right. You know, when the doctors want to see what's wrong with you, they can take you on all. I don't like doctors, and I don't go, okay? I really don't. I try to eat right. I eat a lot, but I try to eat right. But I don't eat a lot. <laughs> Now 
Seal of Zacharias, you probably already know about it. In Luke, the first chapter, starting at the 67th verse, could it be that that woman who showed up at that Pharisee's home, that she heard the prophecy fulfilled? Because she heard the John Baptist. She heard John the Baptist. Could it be? I don't know. John preached, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I. Come on. <laughs> John was humbling himself, amen. He said, I am not even worthy to unloose his shoes, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and I.
Was that expensive perfume? Mm -hmm. Now y'all know what she was using it for. So don't sit here and act like I know what she was using it for. And he 
said he was glorifying God. Why can't we come in like that? Just be on our way, glorifying God. What's in your elbow? That's the Bible. Why are you sitting there looking like that? Because we gotta be back here tomorrow. I mean, go over there tomorrow. Maybe. Okay, I'm going to be quickly then. This is the last year. No, I got five. The Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. And what are you questioning about who? Who, who? who are you questioning about who got what position? The Lord says unto you, what is that to you? <laughs> you just go into the vineyard and work. And whatever is right, I'll pay. You don't have to worry about who Bishop Gill position to. And Lady Baines call her and sit there. You don't have to do that. You just make sure that your heart is right. Go in peace. What is in your alabaster? 